Greetings, I am Lies. And I am Scandal. And let's, let's play, play a game, game together. together. Yes. <clears throat> hey. Well, no splat, it's, it's your stage. Oh my god. Well, coming from you, that means a lot. So much more than if it were coming from someone, someone else. else. Great. Uh, uh, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers like you. The only fellow writer that I consider a writer, and my fellow. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. Like I worry that I can't get my whole life to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring, to bear your soul, to express yourself to me. Specifically, metaphors. Can you use metaphors and innuendo? I mean, metaphors can go a long way. Oh my god, I do not want to metaphorically bare my soul to anyone, let alone you. Don't feel like you need to work your brain, like turning a bunch of gears. It, it's not an intellectual pursuit, really, it's, it's about your feelings. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. Right. I was guessing, so I, and then I was right. You were completely right. Honestly, I appreciate that. But also, I find this to be really interesting, because there's a level of, like... Again, I'm kind of curious as to the writers being like, I hated basically going through my English lit class or my creative writing class where they'd be like, you know, just write a metaphor. And you're like, fucking how, bitch? So what I find to be really funny about this whole thing is especially with the whole, um, like, uh, advertiser club thing that's coming up. Mm, um, right. And then going, we need to make a poster and such like that. I'm going, you all act like literature and reading is boring as shit and you need to work real hard to make it interesting. I know. I'm like, do you not have any book nerds in your whole place? And also it seems like Monica herself doesn't really connect to why reading or literature is good or important. Just going, I wanted to start a club. One that wasn't a big deal. Yay! Like, anyway. <laughs> and that's what I did. Oh, it says, and, and write down the things you see and hear. So no specific instructions and don't think too hard and just let your feelings guide you. But follow all these instructions. Really, Which are also your feelings. abstract and not very definitive. But follow instructions that yeah. are sort of you, you vague need to do and it amorphous. This way, but this way isn't a way because it's just your feelings guiding you. Ah, oh, right. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. And you should be letting me see into your mind because I would like to. Aren't metaphors supposed to stand in for other things? So how do they see into my mind when I'm literally obfuscating my mind with other things? But if I can understand the metaphor and no one else can, then it's just shared between you and I. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a very, I was so right. Oh, yes. On top of this. Yes. Ah. All right. It's a very intimate exercise. Wow. I see. Um, you, yes? Do you? That's a certainly interesting technique. <laughs> a certainly interesting technique. Yeah, the level uh, of like non-committal, like, wow, how fascinating. Okay, sometimes when I get distant relatives or relatives of friends, such as my good skin, uh, friend Scandal's relatives, uh -huh. like just going here and going, that, that they will just be like, let me just overshare a bunch of, you know, basically politically weighted vague blogging at you and how my beliefs are, but with no particular, like, bent. like bent or description on anything. It's just, well, I feel and I think in, in this vague way. And I just go, sounds like you certainly have your priorities in order. And you're just like, well, I just like to approach life in a way where you just really feel what you're doing and you just think, you know, solidly in a, in a moral compass kind of way about where you're going. And just that's what guides me and my soul. I'm like, this is practically, this is a paraphrase from what I actually received recently. Uh -huh, yeah. And I'm just like, sounds like you've got, you know, your ideas really in order. Uh -huh. And they're just like, yeah. And I'm like, cool. Like, you were the most vague and nondescriptive possible, and I figured it out. It's all about morals, let me tell you. Interesting technique. Uh, Interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. Because that means we're done. Thank God. I have, um, well, an example of that, if 
you'd like to read it. I, mean, I was wondering when we were actually going to read your poem, because yes. So what I was describing here was that you need to understand that I'm bearing my soul to you and the deepest parts of myself in my poetry that I'm writing for you, which is from Monica's experience. I'm like, these people are talking to your MC and to you, the viewer. That's the meta I'm slowly picking up here based on mm. when she was like, be sure to save and load and be prepared to save. I'm just like, yeah. these kinds of things aren't only directed at the MC to be interpreted one way. I think they're also directed at the reader slash viewer player. Right. And I think that's really entertaining, but just going, and so now that I've described to you what to do and just go with your feelings. feelings. So her keywords are going to be about feelings in the poetry book, I bet you. Mm, maybe. Get that? You're right. Okay. Of course. I... What? Is this the poem you wrote for today? Holds paper at arm's length between two fingers. God, Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. I, I instantly notice that it has a perfumey kind of attached to it, and it's a scented experience. The raccoon. We've now gone into more prose rather than poetry. <clears throat> it happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. Oh, yeah. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon. Scuttering? Scuttering, scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. Don't think too that hard about it. That was, <laughs> I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an... Unordinary. Unordinary human. Unordinary. Why? Why? The language. Don't think too hard about it. Okay, Your language sorry. goes off the rails. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. What? The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon. Our, an urge. Uh, an urge. Okay, like, I'm sorry, I'm having problems with the cursive. It's I just say, really the font difficult to read. Is, is, if I wasn't, if I hadn't had to work so hard on script slash cursive, Ugh. I would not be able to help you. And I am bad at it. I have horrible handwriting, so I, I always am just like, I can never read anybody's handwriting. I can't read my own. It's fine. <laughs> uh, the, the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. That much more light. That much more light. Excuse me, I'm dropping things because I don't care. All right, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself. Again. This sounds like a self-harm metaphor to me. I can't even... F I, okay, so you have to forgive me. One of the reasons also I never necessarily did very well in English literature is because I'm like, okay, why can't it just mean that? They're like, no, no, there is a meaning. And okay, you're like, so one... I don't care. A lot of times I can't get a meaning. Two, when I do get a meaning, I've always been told by the teacher that my I'm meaning wrong. is wrong. Yeah. Completely wrong. So for me, I'm going, based on the context of this game that it's supposed to be scary, and we're going in on knife imagery and cutting a whole fucking lot, and we've identified a whole bunch of themes of depression, I associate depression with a certain level of behaviors that are, you know, cataloged through, you know, the, the thing of risks that depression has, including self-harm and cutting behaviors. And so in case anyone didn't know, all kinds of warnings in here, but we will just put this in the title in here because I consider this to be a risky thing for some people. All right. So there's warnings. All right. Anyway, um... So to me, at the end, where it's talking about, I discover, you know, basically my my inhumanness or the uh, the un, un, unnormalness of my humanness. You're talking about your sort of animal or base nature, and then if you go back to your animal or base nature, it's really primal in experience. You know, feeling pain isn't complicated from an emotion; it's a physical experience. I I mean, anyway. you've got that, but and you've also the got end, the bread. But the bread is an awkward in between, in between the knife and the thing. Are you saying that your unhumanness now is is that? Mm, my body has become the bread. My but body is soft and pliable. Yeah. And basically food for the world. Yeah, but I'm also like, but the mm -hmm. raccoon is inhuman. So what is the... I... So you are the raccoon consuming yourself. Okay. 
I, and again, I took one literature class for like interpretation. I did too. So just one. And that's based on the themes of the game so far. Like I said, depression and what I associate with depression themes and the fact that this is supposed to be scary. And then the literary context here. It doesn't mean this is what this is at all. But then at the end, you get every time brandishing my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. So my inner, you know, sort of animalness. And then a rush of blood. I have cut myself because there's the knife. Uh -huh. Classic Pavlovian condition. I get excited. I slice myself and I feel myself again. A lot of people describe cutting as being access to emotion. Uh, yes. Access to basically controlling their, their, their feeling experience when they feel and, Like, yeah. Okay. Well, if yeah. we're going to get personal, I have actually cut myself before I did when I was younger, and it was definitely an experience that I described as going, I, I, I was like, I can't feel anything, so that was basically the behavior that I, you know, engaged in in order to feel anything, and I was having quite a day. So, <laughs> anyway, that's what I get from this, If she, since she just also dug into metaphor and about yourself, and read the metaphors into about yourself. So it isn't just I would pick up this poem off of a desk or read it, you know, no context in a collection of poetry, you know, mm -hmm. book kind of thing and get that interpretation at all. But that's what I come up with based on the character so far, the themes of the game so far, and then what we've got here. But again, and what that's she the thing just fucking said. To me, part of the thing that I also think is kind of mildly frustrating is just the level of going, okay, well, if you didn't have the meta awareness of, you know, that the game was supposed to be <clears throat> a horror game, as it were, uh -huh. would you actually read that there? Because that's one of the things that I've always been frustrated by, where people are like, no, no, you need to go into this, this book with a certain mindset. So I went mm. into basically stories all the time where people would be like, no, no, you need to be in this experience. And it's like, but then I'm not just reading the book. You're right. telling me, basically, you're setting me up up to read this in a certain way because uh -huh. otherwise well it doesn't work and it's like then you might have a problem because if you're needing to basically train yourself going somebody needs to prompt you before you read the book maybe right. the book doesn't actually convey its message very well and that's one of the things that i've um talked about before with literature i have a habit of just like thrift shopping books uh -huh. and a lot of thrift shop books aren't categorized by like type at all there's not like you know for you know teens or romance or historical or whatever there's basically like fiction non-fiction and children's books right in if, it, if it's that organized at all otherwise it's just books right so it depends on your thrift shop i was gonna say and sometimes it's really really interesting to pick up a books book and all you have is the title and the author name and nothing else because the dust jackets are often missing mm -hmm. and then you start reading it with no context at all and there's a lot of times where I've read a suspense or a thriller or a romance that I had no idea what it was going into it and it made the book more interesting than if I had known and there was a few of them that after I finished them I went oh that's what the book was or I get three quarters of the way through and I go okay now I totally know what this book is right but had I gone oh this is a mystery I would have just put it down again right and so it's like sometimes priming you for the book doesn't just it it, it creates a bias environment. Yes. It, whether that's one you want, so you go, oh, this is what I'm looking for. Right. Or whether it's something that then otherwise makes you go, ah, well, it's just another one of those. Right, exactly. And then I'm like, you can really basically inform your reader, but you can also, I think in some ways, it's that thing of being stuck too hard in your fandom of going, well, of course. The, like, so I got into an argument at one point with somebody of going, like, so we watched the Avengers movie, and, and um, there was one of the Avengers movies where basically uh, Black Widow and the Hulk end up together, and I was like, what, what the hell just happened? And the one, one of the guys that we went to the movie with was like, well, of course they ended up together. And I went, huh? what the fuck are you talking about? That literally made no sense. And there's a lot of other information, but it was just like, well, <laughs> what else are you going to do? You know, like, of course and that was would just happen. it was basically heteronormative fandom. That uh -huh. was the only two people left. Right? And you're just like, what? I... All right, let me get my... Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It Splat has... literally not giving a shit. I wish I could unsee. Or Splat going, yeah, there were even more words, so I can tell. Great. So can good. I leave now? You won't be able to unsee it. I know, and it will forever be a burden to me. Great. I just, the things that I keep in my mind. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about at all and i could give no fucks the fucks that i give the field that i have it is barren right a lot more metaphorical that's right it's a bit closer to my preferred writing style a little darker including more sharp things and more 
horror imagery. I mean, um, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. That's where my heart is. Yeah! If I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. It basically means that you're, you know, taming wildlife with food, which basically all the signs say do not feed the animals. So you just know you're being responsible, irresponsible, and then you continue to do so because of bread. Yeah. Well, because basically. You just, you know, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, well. I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. You can't tell people you're just feeding the wildlife. I mean, hey. um, uh, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Is you could it... just tell people who are not me. Oh. <laughs> you could just continue speaking. I don't know. To someone else. Someone who studies animals, perhaps. Oh, I know. You should tell a park ranger and get in trouble with them for feeding animals. Mm. That would be great. Awesome. Be, uh, because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Uh, don't you have anything like that, Splat? <laughs> Excuse me? I am a work of art. Something about me that is embarrassing? <laughs> Oh, you must be joking. Yeah. So oh, Gary. Girl. Why? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I'll, I, I'll make you feel better. I don't know what I was going to say. Of course I do. Sayori is around me all the time. <laughs> okay, well, that's not me. That's Sayori. Right, but it's part of your experience. No, it's not. Right. No. No, no it, it is not. not. You cannot equip me with that. I refuse to take that negative 10 to dex and handsomeness. Ew. Thank you. I appreciate it. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. Uh, the best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. And then where would I be? I also feel like Spot being like, oh, sure, I have something like that. But it, what it is is basically it's embarrassing that I suffer to talk to people because somewhere within me is a molecule of politeness. Somewhere within me I feel... One sad. And that's all. That is all. That is the whole sad. I, I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. I literally have nowhere else to go. And I everyone, have to get through you. Right, I have to say, and everyone else has to listen as well, apparently. That's great. I love it. So they're all, yes! honestly, really oh. good listeners. Oh my god, okay, so we're still avoiding Sayori, because, yep. We just spent all that time with her. She was a dangus. I despise it. Goodbye. I, if I give her long enough while I talk to other people, maybe her head will stop hurting oh. and she will not mention it at, at all. all. Perfect. Hmm. Nav Scandal will talk to themselves. I, it would be beautiful. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one, but I can't really say it's any better either. Well Thank God. Oh, how did that happen? We had the cursor run away. Whoops, sorry about sorry that. Sorry about that. I, it was probably because I clicked at okay, some point. That but then be. I moved it over. I don't understand what happened. It's fine. It's okay. She had a cursor uh, for a moment. We removed the blemish. Oh, I've been cursed. Ah, 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 I'm fine. I, uh, huh? Phew, what? Ah, well, anything that is in the train wreck call. Take us a win. Because at least... Then I wouldn't get a goddamn lecture out of you, and you wouldn't be talking to me any longer, okay? Oh, you just make smaller. it shorter, and you're already pretty short, so, honey. Mm -hmm. I And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? We just got in Natsuki's head, or did she whisper that? Like, have I... we suddenly had our first experience inside of someone else's head? I think that's supposed to be like her muttering to herself, because that would be weird. 
Yes. So like, I'm hoping that's her muttering quietly, but I don't know what that convention means in this game. I. It's a good question, actually, because lots of games and lots of stories. Oh my god, so as a role player also, oh too, that gets even weirder when people would start doing, like, parentheses or doing little, you know, whatever. Brackets, brackets or stars or little modifiers. Or... In order, but also in order to basically denote when somebody's speaking another language. So not only sometimes when you have quotation marks, you'd have extra marks to denote that this is a different language. And I've also seen it where italicized for them means a certain emotion and it doesn't necessarily so sometimes I've seen role play groups and it's I haven't actually ever been in a text role play group mm. but I've known a number of people that did including um, my brother got into text role playing sometimes right and there would be this experience of an organized group as he described it would have a legend of what things meant and sometimes you would get people in the group going well yeah but the last group didn't use it that way so I don't like it that way or going and someone going yeah but you said this in a soft tone of voice and they're like no this type of thing means sarcasm and they would just ah! argue what what the the what underline means, what italicized means, what it means when you put it in double brackets or stars or whatever. Oh wow, I haven't heard that amount of depth of stuff at all. Like the only other thing that I've seen that's weirded me out in regards, and I'm saying even my own stuff sometimes, where I'd be like, why do we go to that much crazy? Like, right? but it was also like sometimes in regards to, and this is not to knock on people, it's just sort of a thing of going that just seems really unusual. Where it's just like people are like, what I did is I took everything that was basically the narration and the character descriptors and everything else, and I put all in italics and then when they're talking it's all you know like bolded and huge and then so this is description this is a character speaking yeah and you're like whoa whoa the contrast is huge and like for me i was just like i can't read it like also especially because some people use really fancy fonts sometimes yes and you're just like i've also seen that one where when people just do excerpts of their roleplay stuff like when i'm scrolling on tumblr sometimes it'll be like this character speaks in this ridiculous fluty font and you're like well, I'm just going to take that as, uh, keep talking, your accent is beautiful. What did you say? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I have no idea. Excuse me? I can't even read that. I, anyway, but, anyway right. so, well, um, I guess... We're going to understand more about this convention in the next one. Yes, absolutely. So thank you very much, guys, then, for joining us. If you like we do, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and also share our videos if you're having a good time with us. Please also feel free to go check out our co fire Patreon. Got some links in the description down below. And I have been Scandal. And I have been live. <gasps> and, and it was great playing with you. Bye!